Welcome to episode 55. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and you're listening to Who Did That Voice, where we take an in-depth look at voiceovers. Finally, warmer weather is here, and there is no better time than right now to book your vacation getaway with 3D Travel Company. Head on over to our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co and click the Book Now button on the left-hand side. They give a complimentary quote so you can get an idea of what it will cost to take your summer vacation. For a limited time, Who Did That Voice listeners can receive a Disney gift card for qualifying Disney and Universal trips, booked and traveled by the end of 2017. Hurry and book today so you can travel away. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today is part two with Gary Chalk, the special guest we started with last Friday. If you didn't hear last week's episode, please tune in before you hear this one. Now, here are the clips we showed last week, just to give you a preview of some of the characters he voiced. Today's special guest has voiced Lord Viper on King Arthur and the Knights of Justice. Warlord, attack! Destroy Camelot! Today's special guest also voiced Gutsman from the 1994 Mega Man. Hey, Gutsman, what do you shout when you're cutting down a tree? Uh, timber? If you insist. The last preview we're going to cover today is from Beast Wars Transformers. Today's special guest voiced Optimus Primal, the leader of the Maximals. Maximals, maximize! Moderate your conflict circuits, Maximals. Remember, these beast forms are to protect us from the long-term effects of the Energon fields out there. We may need Energon for power. But this is too much of a good thing. Our robot forms will start to short out after a few minutes exposure. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Well, back in 1997, Gary, you played on a show called Extreme Dinosaurs. Do you remember that one? Yeah. And you played, and played Bad Rap. Bad, bad Rap, who was the... Uh, bad Rap was kind of a gangster T-Rex kind of character. I remember that. Yeah, I was. He was a good character, Bad Rap. He was kind of like a right rabbit, you know, from you know, uh, Rocky. Yeah, yeah. A right rabbit. So yeah, I remember that. That was fun. Absolutely. Extreme dinosaurs, and then we we did that other show called T Rex, which was another dinosaur show. Yeah. Which was fun, and I sort of did a. Uh, Kind of a Jackie Gleason kind of character. If I can, no, it was a Jackie. No, it was, uh, what's his face? Uh, his neighbor the Jack, on the Jackie Gleason show. Norton. Yeah, it's kind of a Norton voice. <laughs> yeah, but that, that, hello, bull. You know, what are you doing there? You know, he said, you just addressed the bull there. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was, it's amazing how they all come back. Yeah. Well, you've been a part of some amazing shows that have been first generation and others that have just um, carried on a legacy that was already established. And you've played some awesome, amazing roles over well, the years. Thank you so much. And, and you played Slash on Reboot, which was a fantastic show. <laughs> oh, my favorite. My favorite. They're rebooting Reboot right now. I thought I had heard that, but I wasn't sure. But it's half live action, half animated. Oh, okay. And they're using none of the original cast. Well, that's kind of odd. Well, that's what I said. But uh, no, the only original they're having from the cast is Megabyte, which I read for, but I think they're going to go with a Toronto guy to do that part. I know I was second choice for it uh, when Tony J did the part. Okay. But Tony passed away and they were going to keep Megabyte, but that's the only character out of all the characters that were in the original show that they're keeping. Oh, wow. uh, as far as I can see. 
Okay. You know, so it's a whole different, I don't know what it is, but a whole different ball game. I, I hope for their sakes that it's a success, but I've got a feeling that the fans will be very, very disappointed. Yeah. Well, but hope- we'll see. I mean, yeah. You know, yeah. We'll see what happens, huh? Yeah. Well, that's all you can do is you can just, but it's, it's, people are funny, you know, they, they, when they get, you know, characters locked in their head, they think, well, this is what, this is the characters I want. Oh yeah. And when they don't see them, they'll just be, hmm, well, that's odd. But there you go. Well, sometimes as a kid, I was the same way. Like if a voice changed, but sometimes you don't realize, you know, eventually the people that voice it are not necessarily always going to be here or, you know, yeah. different things happen and, uh, you know, different companies are producing the shows or whatever it is and they bring on a, a whole new cast or whatever. So, but it is sometimes frustrating when you're attached to a character and they come back and it's all different and you're like, this is not what I want. <laughs> well, I know I was like that with, uh, with Barney Rubble. Yeah. You know, and Fred Flintstone. When Barney Rubble's voice changed about a, a couple of seasons into the show, and I went, hey, that's not Barney. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Fred. No, that's not Barney. That's somebody else. And uh, I was uh, a bit perplexed as to why he sounded so different yeah. from the original. But, uh, yeah, no, it goes like that. Well, you know, another great show that you got to be a part of, which has a great legacy, is My Little Pony. Uh, and you got to play the character all aboard, the pony all aboard. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was a long time ago. It was six years ago. Yes. Was it so that long? Yeah. It's been a bit. I, did, I didn't realize that I did that. I've forgotten it. But uh, I did uh, that. I did uh, Diamond Dog. And I also, I'm, now I'm doing a character called Prince Rutherford. Prince Rutherford. Okay. The The yak. <laughs> the yak. From from Yakland or Yako Yak or whatever it's called, I can't remember. <laughs> That's funny. But but it's 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 funny as well. You'll see. That's awesome. And is, is that a new thing that's coming up? A new project or? Well, I th- I did it. I think I did one last. Se- I did a ca- the character last season, and they brought it back this season. And uh, I think I hope, or else I'm screwed if I- <laughs> 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 I'm betraying my NDA. But. Um, yeah, it should be it should be kind of fun. So stay tuned, watch it, and you'll see. But uh, definitely, it'll be a lot of fun. Well, the last main character I was going to talk about was Sky Marshal Wade on the Voltron Force Voltron reboot. Voltron Force, yeah. And uh, what was it like playing on that show, which was a reboot from the original? That show was actually a ton of fun because there was a lot of there were several people on that who worked on that show who some had uh, been doing their very first cartoon and some her old vets and uh all of them were were wonderful there was miles and there was this chinese fellow like vincent there was uh, vincent tong and miles come on what's your last name miles and ty olson and me and uh, who else was in that show? Uh, I believe uh, Ian Corlett was in it, and Ashley uh, was in it. And it's coming to me. It's coming. It's coming. So many names. Oh, um, Andrew. Andrew. Damn! I just I suffer from some timers. <laughs> some timers. Yes, I just forget sometimes, but I I, rem- I can see them all, and uh, I got most of the names. I just some of them I forgot. But uh, Andrew Francis. Andrew Francis, that's right. He's got that deep voice. <laughs> I, re- I remember the first time working with Andrew. He had a voice like that. You know, he was just a little kid. <laughs> and then and then one day his voice went from this to this. Right? Hey, how are you? Just like <laughs> overnight, his voice broke. Good lord. And he got this big, deep Andrew voice. It was quite funny to watch, and it was uh, it was cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, but working on that show was uh, was quite interesting because we had to sort of, you know, uh, fill other people's shoes and uh, and came up with a great story and a great show. And now they've uh, actually rebooted it again. Yeah. In a different way. With well, it was the same show, but uh, different uh, different voices again. So I don't know what happened with that. I thought we were going to be doing Voltron Force here, but I think they've decided to do it in Los Angeles. Uh, for why I don't know, but um, there you go. 
Yeah. But it was a lot. That was that was well. The thing about that show is it had some some very interesting characters and some and some great character depth and that you had to go through different levels to uh, you had to create like fully rounded characters yeah rather than cartoon characters they had different levels to them like my my uh my character had a slow descent into madness <laughs> which was which was quite fun after he got zapped in the blue flame of whatever it was, <laughs> I can't remember. And see, I tell you, there. See, the thing is, is that well, I I done so many shows yeah, on you have. camera and behind the scene, you know, and voicing that it's hard to keep track of them all. Sometimes I just have to go on the computer and just and remind myself who is this guy, what was this, and then I go, oh yeah, that's I remember that show. Or there's one uh, there's one show that I did uh, something about my three kids or three kids or something. It was a it was a movie, a kids movie, and I cannot remember for the life of me ever doing this movie. But then I watched it on the TV about a month ago, and I went, "Oh shit, I did work on that movie." <laughs> And I, I could not, I, for, I don't know why I put it out of my head. It wasn't, it wasn't a, an awful experience. It was really fun. Great people. Something, something and three kids. I can't remember. But uh, I looked at and I couldn't remember doing it. But sure enough, I did it. Well, like you said, Gary, you've done so much. I'm sure it's hard to remember. And maybe that year you didn't remember it because you did so many things. Well, there were a lot of, uh, a lot of shows. Like one I completely forgot was uh, Aliens in America. It was a sitcom, and I was on it with uh, the, the this East Indian fellow who who comes from a Muslim country to to live with a American family, and all the weirdness that went on with that. And it was it was actually quite funny. The kid was quite brilliant. That's awesome. I, uh, liked him, little very English fellow. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Yeah, you know, it's it's they just sort of they just sort of blend. Well, Gary, I'm going to ask you what kind of advice would you give to someone who might look at pursuing voiceover? Uh, if you're going to pursue voiceover as a career, I would say get some voice training. Not, you know, like you know, you can get a, the singing is the best training to get because it trains you how to use your voice and use your breath, your breathing and so on. Uh, read out loud every day and uh, try and lift things off the page. Imagine like I, I would do with a novel, imagine uh, reading a novel and then reading it like it was a story you're telling on radio. I would um, explore all the different area, all the different resonators in my body, top of my head, eyeballs, nose, mouth, lungs, all the things that vibrate, that resonate, like a guitar box, right? Yeah. And explore all the different placements of where you can put your voice, get your acting chops down. In other words, take some take some acting classes, and the, the more comprehensive the acting classes you take, the better it'll become, simply because voice acting is the purest form of acting because you have to fill in basically all the blanks, all the geography, the emotion, the exertion, uh, and your intellectual stuff, you know, you have to have the difference between saying hello to somebody two feet away, eight feet away, and 20 feet away. You have to have, you, you have to create that because they draw around your voice. Yeah. So you have to make it just a little bit more than uh, real so that when they draw it, it brings it down to uh, to their normal. And the, the one thing I've always stressed with cartoons is that even though cartoon characters are cartoons, they're real in that world. Yeah. And their characters are real beings in that real. They have real fears and real happiness and sadness and all those things, all the emotions. They're all real in an unreal world. And if you don't um, give them the depth, the layers that they deserve as, as living entities, then people don't care about them. If you don't care about them, then then you're sunk. Yeah. So you got if you're a villain, you got to make people just hate you, 
And if you're a good guy, you're going to make people love you. And and if you're a, a you know sidekick, people are going to laugh at you. Yeah, and laugh with you. And and so it's very important to get those acting chops down. It's very important to be a very good reader to be able to like. I just got into. I don't know if you know Daryl Duke, but Daryl Duke was a um, a famous uh, film director and writer. And uh, Daryl Daryl was a friend of mine and my wife's. I think my wife is a cousin of his somehow. But we got invited to his Daryl Duke Foundation. The Daryl Duke Foundation cordially invites you, you and a guest, to a celebration and reception on the occasion of the inaugural awarding of the Daryl Duke Prize, Canada's new creative prize that recognizes the importance of the writer and the power of storytelling. And it's to be able to take the words off the page without faltering and stumbling and, and to get all the emotional content out of those words right away. Absolutely. Yeah. So, cause like when you get a script like that, like here's a script, as you can see, yeah. this is so I don't sell it or steal it. They put, they, they put your name on the script. <laughs> so if it gets out there, they know. <laughs> and they, yeah, if it gets, if it gets taken or it ends up on the, uh, ends up on the internet, they know exactly who it came from because they're all big on secrecy, right? Yeah. So when you're reading these things, you got to be able to uh, put the script down on a stand and read it with all the acting beats there. And that's a lot harder than you think. And uh, so that's what they do. The other thing is sing. Sing, 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 sing. If you can sing, sing as much as you you dare because... um, Singing is not only good for your voice, but it teaches you placement of your voice. And if you have a, if you de- develop an ear, you can hear much better than a person who doesn't sing. Yeah. Because you can hear the changes in tone. For example, uh, let's just take one, one sentence and say, I'm leaving. Disgruntled, bored. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Uh, excited. I'm leaving. Sad. I'm leaving. Angry. I'm leaving. Uh, thoughtful. I'm leaving. Uh, confused. Uh, I'm leaving. Dreading. I'm leaving. Fearful. Uh, I'm leaving. Boldly. I'm leaving. <laughs> or heroically. I'm leaving. You know, there's all those different variations in tone. I just give you a gross example, but yeah, yeah. this is, you know, this is all the variations in, in a sentence, even like, you know, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. How about you? No, you know, <laughs> there's, there's all those, those different things you have to be able to put it and be able to look on the script and determine which one of them it is, you know, yeah. So you have to know exactly what's being said and why it's being said and who it's being said to. That's very important. And once you've got all the, you know, the what, what I call a foundation of skill, once you've got that foundation built and you're confident enough to put your voice out there, now it's time to make a demo tape, put that together, and then farm it out to all the different uh, studios and agencies who do that sort of thing. Then, uh, then once you get the your voice out there and people go, oh, maybe we should have a look at this guy or this girl. Now, now you really gotta you gotta put up or shut up, you know. So you get the size, the script, you study it, you learn it. You learn what it means. You work it with somebody else. You listen to it on your own tape recorder at home. And then you go to the audition and hope like hell that you get the part. And uh, it's it's a tough one to do. And another thing to do is to uh, learn how to accept direction from a director and understand what they talk about when they ask you for something. I like the line, but could you sprinkle a little bit of pixie dust on that? What does that mean? It's just going to make it a little brighter. You know? Well, maybe we could leave. Maybe. 
coffee or something like, uh, or they'll say, well, it's too slow. Speed it up a little bit, cut out those gaps. And, uh, and then, and so you speed up the pace of the line without rushing. Just, it means, you know, speed it up 10% to, uh, to, so instead of going, well, I think I'm going to the store to buy a glass of milk. That's too slow. Can you speed up? Well, I think I'm going to the store to buy a glass of milk. So you just haven't changed the intent of this thing, but you've just speeded it up a little bit. Uh, and uh, when you're, you know, it's a, this is the end of the act. This is the dun 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 moment. What they call the dun dun dun. So you're at the end of the act. So the character says, where did he go? So where did he go? And you go, I don't know. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know. Dun, dun, dun. It's not like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Bum, bum, bum. You know, yeah. so you have those kinds of moments. And uh, they're what they would call act ender, act enders. <laughs> and, and so, and watch a lot of cartoons and listen to the rhythms, listen to the way the voices go, uh, listen to how the characters interact with each other. And that's all I can say. The rest is up to you. Well, Gary, thank you so much for sharing that in-depth perspective into what people kind of need to look into and, and try to approach uh, to kind of get into voiceover. There is a lot to it. There is a lot. Oh, yeah. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. <laughs> That's the whole thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Gary, so. I, I have one final question for you today, okay. sir. And the question is, what is the legacy you want to leave behind? My legacy is basically I want to leave behind a body of work that I'm proud of, that uh, people will enjoy long after I'm gone. That's basically my legacy. And to know that I have, I've, I have done, to my mind, the best of my ability and have uh, managed to leave a body of work that's, that's pretty darn good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's my legacy. And hopefully that, uh, you know, that all the, uh, the newcomers are coming in, I, hopefully they can carry on the tradition and, and keep at it and don't give up. That's that's my legacy. It's pretty simple. Absolutely, Gary. Well, thank you so much for sharing everything you've shared with us today with all the shows you've been involved with and the advice you've given us. And uh, I really do appreciate your time. And Well, thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank you. Say hi to all the gang in, in Oklahoma City. I sure did. There was a, I, I met a, a bunch of uh, your actors and, and some directors uh, who do some films in, in Oklahoma City. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, fantastic. I think one was named Kim, Kim something or other. And guys dressed up as cowboys. They look at Western older guys, but they were, they were really first rate, really nice people. So that's awesome. Big shout out to all our fans in uh, Oklahoma City. Who I enjoyed very much. So thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it, Gary. Well, Gary, it has been an absolute honor and pleasure having you on the show today. Would you please give us a close out today as Optimus Prime? You know something? The keys to the future lie buried in the past. So always remember everything that you have done, everything that you have ever thought, every mistake that you thought you made brought you to where you are today. So you haven't made any mistakes. You haven't done bad. You're living, you're alive, you're happy, and you're here. Transform and roll out. Well, everyone, I sure hope you enjoyed today's episode with Gary Chalk, the voice of Optimus Primal, and so many other amazing voices. And if you did, please find me on Facebook or Twitter by searching Who Did That Voice? I would love to hear from you. You know, a question you might ask yourself is, where can I listen to Who Did That Voice? That's an excellent question. You can hear us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co. Click the Episodes tab and listen away.
Well, everyone, that's all the time we have for this episode. Join us next Friday for our next special guest, Sam Vincent, the voice of Ed with two Ds from Ed, Ed and Eddie, and the voice of Crypto from Crypto the Superdog. You won't want to miss this episode. Hey, do you ask yourself, who did that voice? Well, if you do, go to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and click on the Episodes tab. Choose an actor, pick their name, and see pictures from the different characters they voiced in their career. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice.